I'm going to use this uh, lecture to show you how you can use a Power BI gateway to form a link between the Power BI report that you've published to the cloud and your source data, which perhaps resides in a subdirectory or a folder in your school's uh, IT network. The first thing we're going to do is download the Power BI gateway software itself. And you'll see here that I'm in app.powerbi.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the three dots up at the top here, where there's an option to go to the downloads. And from here, you can either download Power BI Desktop, or in this case, I want Power BI Data Gateway to download. So I'll click on the Data Gateway. And you have two choices. There is a standard mode gateway and a personal mode gateway. The standard mode gateway is designed to sit on file servers and is designed to be multi-user, i.e. several different Power BI users can all use the same gateway to download their files. The personal mode is uh, for people who perhaps don't have access to the file server or people whose access is limited in some way. Perhaps you don't have administrator access. Um, or perhaps you don't know specific passwords or administrator codes or whatever. Start with the standard mode. And if you can't get that to work, I recommend you go to the personal mode and try personal mode instead. They all work on similar, uh, similar lines. So I'm going to download standard mode. And this will take me through the usual um, uh, setup procedure. So I'm just going to download this to my uh, download subdirectory and it takes a few minutes so I'll just pause the video while it downloads. Okay it's downloaded now uh, that took about five minutes it's downloaded so I'll click on open and run through the installation routine uh, for this uh, gateway. So I just need to accept the terms click install and go through this pretty typical installation routine. While it's doing that, I suppose in normal circumstances, I will be installing this particular gateway on the file server. As it happens, I'm installing this on my laptop. The procedure is exactly the same. The gateway is just a piece of software that's going to sit um, between, if you like, between your files, your CSV files, maybe your local Excel files, whatever it is, and the Power BI service. And it's going to feed the reports that you've got in the Power BI service with the data uh, from these CSV files. Uh, and it's going to do that automatically and in the background. So you don't have to run the uh, local Power BI file. You don't have to load that local PBIX file. And you don't have to click refresh in the local PBIX file. And then you don't have to press the publish button in your local PBIX file either. All the, 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 the tasks related to that local copy of the PBIX file a bypassed if you like your local PBIX file is just bypassed for the for, as far as the gateway is concerned and the gateway just handles the data traveling between your local CSV files and your report on the gateway itself. So we're nearly finished now I'm just going to enter an email address to use with the gateway and it'll also ask me at this point to sign in and I'll sign in with my usual um, administrator uh, account for Power BI. Uh, it's usually the, as a, you're usually an administrator. If you're already publishing your reports, you'll probably already be an administrator as far as Power BI is concerned. I'm going to choose to register a new gateway on this computer. And I'm going to give it a name. And just call it my gateway demo. But obviously you'll want to give it something reasonably um, um, intuitive. I'm going to put a recovery key in here. Basically, it's a password, a password just in case you need to uh, restore the gateway details from a backup or anything like that. Um, so use a, a secure password and keep this secret. And mine don't match, so I'll just type that again. And eventually, when you type the right recovery key in twice, it will take us to the next step.
And this is the sort of homepage for the gateway, if you like. Uh, don't find we have to revisit this particularly often once it's set up. It just seems to uh, sit there nicely in the background. It's just indicating that the software's there, software's working. The next step is to actually tell it how to access your CSV files. And we don't do that here. We do that back at app.powerbi.com. So here I am back at app.powerbi.com. Uh, and I'm going to go to the three dots up here at the top corner of the screen where it says settings, down to settings, and down to manage gateways. And when we do that, we should find that there's our new gateway uh, listed on the gateway clusters there. So we need to set this up to use the data sources um, in our system. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look at an example report. An example here, I'm using my school analytics system. And you can see this is the home page. And you can see I'm in the desktop version of Power BI. And if I wanted to get the latest information into this, I would need to run the reports that generate the CSV files, this being SIMS. Um, and then I have to uh, click the refresh button here and click the publish button here at which point it would uplift everything to the Power BI service and I could share the updated copy with all my school users. But what if I don't want to have to go through this faff of clicking refresh and clicking publish and doing that every day? What if I win the lottery tomorrow and I don't come into school? What's going to happen then? Well, this is where the Power BI gateway comes in useful because the Power BI gateway will pick up those CSV files, which will have been updated by, by Sims overnight and it publishes them automatically, bypasses this PBIX file completely and publishes them automatically to the copy that we uploaded to the cloud earlier. But before it can do that, we need to tell Power BI, the Power BI service exactly where those CSV files are. So let's just identify for ourselves before we do anything else exactly where those files are. So I'm going to go to transform data here and this takes us to a part of Power BI called the Power Query Editor which handles those CSV files. Power Query Editor is a little program within a program. So up it comes now, and here it is. Now in School Analytics, you can check where these files are because under File Load Parameters here is an option that says Base Subdirectory. And this should be pointing you at a subdirectory on your school off which all the CSV files are saved. So make a note of that. Um, if you wish, if you wish, and let's have a look at those files in the file system by going to File Explorer. Here is File Explorer on my system here, and you can see we've got a set of subdirectories with data in. The key ones, you probably won't have all of these subdirectories, but the key ones will be pupils, where all the pupil data files are kept. There'll be another one called attendance, where all the attendance marks files are kept. And there'll be another one called other where various other spreadsheet files, these are Excel files, are kept. The others are CSV files, these are Excel files. Okay, we know roughly now where everything sits and where everything's located. What I'm gonna do now is for one last time here, I'm gonna click the publish button here and publish my um, report up to the cloud. So I have a copy up in the cloud. Now this in theory is the last time I have to do this because as soon as I've got my gateway set up, the only need I have for this PBIX file is as um, a way of making changes to the visualizations. For the day-to-day -day running of the system, I don't need this local PBIX file. This is just like I say, if I want to put a new visualization on or change the logic behind the visualizations, I would need to revisit this PBIX file. But the day-to-day -day updating, this would not need this local PBIX file. I'm uploading mine to a workspace called Gateway Demo. I'll click on Select and I'll let it publish it for the first time to that gateway, to that workspace, uh, just as it normally does. Okay, there it is. I'll click on the link now. That takes me to app.powerbi.com and I can see my report within my workspace called Gateway Demo. And there it is. If I go to my workspace here, I can now see that I have got basically the front end, which is the bit with all the fancy graphs on there. And I've got the back end, a bit that's got the data in, in this point here. Now, if I hover the mouse 
over the data set, the back end here, the orange icon, if I hover the mouse over it, you'll see these three dots appear. Click on those three dots and you'll see that there is a setting option. What we're going to do next is we're going to we're going to adjust the settings of this data set so that it picks up its refreshed data CSV files via the gateway. So I'll click on settings. And this comes up with some basic information. It comes up with a data set description, which you can fill out if you wish. But the second option down there is hopefully gateway connection, which you can click on. You should see there listed our new gateway gateway demo there in my case but it should at this stage say not configured correctly that's that's dead right it's not configured correctly yet if you click on the arrow next to it there it's, if you hover it it says view data sources do that and these are all the data sources that we saw a few moments ago within power bi desktop and power query editor within that those are the data sources that it's found within them these are the data sources of course that being in the cloud it can't remotely have a chance of actually being able to read these because these are data sources on your local system and that's where the gateway is going to come in so useful so the first option here is for a spreadsheet called national averages.xlsx which i can click on add to gateway and when i do it takes me to my gateway demo and highlights new data source there it is leave the data source name for now it should automatically have written in the full path and this will be the path on your local machine if you like to that particular resource in this case uh, a spreadsheet called national averages .xl sx now what i do i need to give this a data source a name so what i usually do and you can do this or not do this it's entirely up to you is i usually copy a little bit of the file path and the name of the file and use that as the data source name Notice that this is a file data source type because this is an actual file. It's an Excel file. Underneath here, it's asked for the credentials. Uh, sorry, it asks for the Windows username. Now, quite often, this is the bit that causes the most problem uh, when I'm trying to set up uh, a gateway. You may well find that the username that works here isn't necessarily the username that you're logged in with. I don't know what the definitive answer is on this, but all I can say is you might have to try a few different Windows usernames before you get the right one. Mine's already filled out there because I've done this before and it's remembered my settings. So I'm just going to click on add now. And hopefully it will add that successfully. There we go. That's the first one done. Uh, I'm just going to go back down to gateway connection now. I'll refresh, I'll go back down to view data sources. And now you can see that that has successfully, if you've got a tick there, it's mapped the file to that particular Excel file. So now our report, our data set knows where to find that particular file. Let's go to the next one on the list. Now the next one is another little Excel file, same idea as before. So I'm just gonna run through the same routines each time to add each of these folders or files to the this is a folder it's a folder called attendance so notice there it's come up with a folder in every other way it's the same routine Okay, that's just about done now. We've got we've got green ticks all the way down there. The final step here is to map this to um, one of the um, data sources that we've just set up. So you'll see now why I chose to name them other backslash national averages .xlsx, because now we can easily link that one and map it to the corresponding file. So it's just a matter of going down this list now. Power BI itself is clever enough 
to uh, suggest which of the ones we should use. So I know they're all mapped up and we can click on apply. So what we should have now under data source credentials, if that's if, if the, the section above is completed successfully, we should see admin has granted access or words to that effect. Credentials are not required because now that's quite happy. And while we're here, we can now go down to scheduled refresh and turn the scheduled refresh on. Uh, we might choose to have a daily refresh and we can choose a time. Uh, so we can choose maybe a time in the early hours of the morning. Then we can add another time, maybe another one about 11 o'clock in the morning. And let's say we want to do a further refresh, maybe about 3 p.m. Now, obviously, if Sims is only updating once a night, then there's probably no point in having three separate updates throughout the day. Uh, you may want to time this so that um, um, the refresh happens maybe a couple of hours after the Sims reports have run, so it will pull the latest version of those Sims reports across. I'm just using this as an example. Sometimes it, it's worthwhile putting a couple of refreshes in through the day, just in case one of them fails. They do occasionally fail for no particularly good reason. But if you have two or three running a day, you should make it should ensure that uh, your data is at least updated at least once a day. You can choose more than that. I think you can choose up to eight if you've got a pro license. Uh, if you go down the uh, premium per user license route, I think you can have even more refreshes during the course of the day. But that's that's basically what uh, you can do. You can see you've got various other options underneath there. If I click on apply now, that's all set up. So uh, at um, um, four o'clock tomorrow morning should be my first refresh. Before you go away from here, you probably want to test this to make sure that those refreshes are actually going to work at four o'clock in the morning. And if you want to do that, you can go back to your um, um, workspace view here and you've got a refresh now, now option just over that. And if you click on refresh now, it can use that gateway and it can pull the data across from the gateway and hopefully you'll get a successful refresh. And that means that you can really expect it to work automatically quite happily uh, the next time um, it, uh, it, it gets called. You'll see here we've got this circling um, set of dots here that indicate that the refresh is in uh, process. And if there is a problem, you'll get a little exclamation mark there that indicates a problem. And you might just have to go and investigate that. But that's it. Um, that's how you set up automatic refresh uh, within Power BI.